Welcome to Combinations, the podcast from North Staffordshire Combined Healthcare NHS Trust. One of the reasons we created this podcast is to provide a platform for frontline teams and some of our strategic projects to be able to inform service users and the public about the brilliant things that we're doing. And amongst all the things that we're doing, some of the best is in the sphere of digital. We are a digital aspirant programme. We are one of the leading NHS trusts in the country in both its delivery, its innovation and its exploitation of digital channels, tools and techniques. Um, Over the next few weeks, we're going to be doing a series of podcasts highlighting various aspects of what we're doing and bringing home the reality of the benefits that it can bring. But today, we're going to start off with one particular project, and that's called the Community Aid Project. And um, I'm here with a, a range of people from across the Trust who can explain how they've been involved in it, how it fits into the Trust's strategic aims, and also the frontline benefits for staff and service users. Um, so, everybody, if I could uh, invite you just to introduce yourself and say who you are and your role in the Trust. Hello, I'm Rachel Wallacecraft and I am a Community Engagement Coordinator. Hello, my name is Rachel Wilson. I'm a Community Mental Health Worker, STR role at Greenfields. Hi, I'm Lou Wright, Digital Transformation Specialist, working with digital. Hello, my name is Lisa Sharrock and I'm a Clinical Lead for the Digital Aspirants Programme. Hi, I'm Leslie Birkin. Um, transformation lead for the digital uh, team in North Staffordshire combined. Right, thanks very much. Um, Leslie, transformation lead for the digital, what, know, sorry? It sounds, sounds very posh. So t- tell us how posh it is and tell, tell, tell the world a little bit about the Digital Aspirants programme and what we've been doing across the Trust. So Digital Aspirants um, comes on the back of the LDE programme, the Lorenzo Digital Exemplar programme. Um, what we want to do is build on that work where we are an exemplar, we are an exemplar trust um, this came at a great time and also a difficult time, didn't it, through COVID. Um, but we've got many work streams within the Digital Asp- uh, Aspirants Programme. Some of them are about mobile working. Some of them are about our platform on the portal, which is the LDE work, and but expanding that out to all age. Um, and there's a whole range of items, one of which we're here to discuss today, which is about the community aid, which is been absolutely key and and life-changing i think for some of our staff especially during covid it's really pushed the point that um, we need to get staff mobile truly mobile and not having to return to base and i think if we can tell the story of what it was like before and after you know that that's going to encourage others and see the benefits of, of what we do yes there were challenges weren't there Very challenges much. with everything we do but i think overall the benefits outweigh the challenges mm-hmm. and I think it's been an exciting journey for all of us um, but hugely benef- beneficial and a game changer to those community staff and more importantly and I do say more importantly mm-hmm. but a game changer for the patients as well and our clients so yes. I throw that open yeah okay so so I think um, yes one of the, one of the things that uh, that we I think we've realized both this trust and the NHS as a whole um, over the, uh, the COVID period is digital has been something whose time has come really, hasn't it? And I think one other thing I think which has surprised us nicely is also funny enough, just how staff have actually embraced it and, and shown that they can innovate real at speed and under incredible yeah. pressure. I think the biggest shock to me from working in clinical systems for years, and I mean years, 15 years, it was almost like digital and clinical systems we would push the use of clinical systems and digital and we would be trying to encourage and almost begging you to get on board as clinicians um but covid hit and we changed as a trust i think clinicians changed as well and so we're going to have to this is you know staying as we are is no longer an option we need to adjust and we need to adjust quickly we didn't wait for perfect either, which I think is key. We waited for good enough. Does it make my life better? Yes. Well, then we'll work with it. And I think we've all gone on that journey together. And I think I'm I'm happy to say, I think personally, we've probably moved five years digitally in months. And 
you guys are key to that. And I think Lisa has been key, our clinical leads. You know, it is a clinician driven product and that's changed, that shift has been, you know, palpable within the team. It's, we've got people queuing up wanting this bit of technology and that's never <coughs> happened before. So for me, it's like my heart beams and you know, this is, this is why I'm in it really, to make people's life better to make your life as clinicians better, but also to improve quality of the patient record, to improve, you know, the, the engagement with clients who need our help. You know, because we sit at a computer, it doesn't mean that we're, we're, we're not in it for the patients. We all are, it's just my strengths are not with patients, but yours are, do you know <laughs> what I mean? But we're all here and we want to make it better for everyone. And I think mm-hmm. this last 18 months has, you know, really, really shone that light on how we can work together and make things different for the better and it's not just you know all oh, that that thing in the corner that's making my life difficult <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Yeah. brilliant so so obviously um that's the big picture if you like the big vision yeah um, we're here uh, this morning to talk about something specific and that that's a fantastic uh, individual project within the this work stream called uh, community aid now before we get into the details of it and, and, and what we've learned and the, the benefits and our hopes and our fears and all that sort of stuff, very, very simply, um, people listening to this, this uh, podcast, lots of them have no idea what community aid is. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the, uh, so who would like to just um, set the scene and say, OK, this is what community aid is. This was the aims of the project. Yeah, I'm happy to do that, Jo. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. So Community Aid is um, a scaled down version of our electronic patient record, which is Lorenzo, um, that's able to be um, mobile. So um, you're able to sort of download all the forms that you need that when you're in a, a service user interaction or care contact. Um, so, for example, CDC forms, which are the sort of assessment forms and, and the um, outcome measures and things like that, um, before you go out on the visit. And then you can press uh, disconnect, um, which is a little button at the top. And then you can go out on your visit away from the Wi-Fi and three networks and go about your, um, your community visits in the community, going from patient to patient to patient without the need to come back to base to then go and put your notes on, because you can do that in the patient's home. And then once uh, the notes are on, you can go back um, and you've finished your contacts, you can go back either to, if you're working from home or to base, and upload them back into, and it uploads instantly, as soon as you touch the button, back into the electronic patient record. And this is a massive game changer for staff who have always had to go out to, to see the patient, write uh, notes in the di- keep, keep a paper diary on all the visits, then go back into the office, then upload all the notes and information and trying to keep all that in your head uh, when you're back in the office can sometimes be difficult. Um, and then perhaps go out on another visit. Um, so instead of all that, you're saving that time uh, in terms of um, your, your petrol and your travel. Um, and also that releases that time to care, doesn't it? Which then gets re, re- in, um Immersed into the patient care, which is uh, fantastic. So it almost sounds like a complete <laughs> no-brainer. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. A complete no-brainer. Yeah. It's what we've wanted in digital for you for so long, because we've got remote services in Leek, you know, in Bidoff. We've got all of those places that have, we've got, I was going to say, you know about this, Joe, don't you? Sort of dead zones in the Wi-Fi. But um, yeah, and, and it's paper. I mean, we're talking about going carbon neutral, aren't we? Paper fuel your time but and again yeah. as lisa said more importantly time to care yeah. it's not about saving money all the time it's about actually it's not about saving money at all it's about releasing time for you to be with the patients it's more interactive as well it's a bit i think initially when we were asked if we'd like to take part there was a bit of resistance in how do you bring the app into when you're with that um service user when you're talking and doing that piece of work where actually it's enhanced that, hasn't it? Very much so. It's um, streamlined my working practice, um, usually, whereas not having to do my notes completely on a Friday and thinking about who did what when or flicking through a book of notes that I've scribbled down, I'm 
involving the patient within writing the notes, um, which is more beneficial. And the patients that I've um, got on my caseload have enjoyed telling me what to put. <laughs> so it's been quite interactive, inclusive. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So what you are planning more of your activity now, aren't you, mate? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. In advance. As Very well. much so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and you can look a little bit further ahead mm -hmm. with that patience rather than um, things being more sort of, what's the word I'm looking for? Reactive. Reactive. Yes. Mm, yeah. 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 So if, if we just focus on that, because I think that's one, been one of the challenges that we've identified in, in, the, in the project that we've worked with. A lot of teams probably work retrospectively. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So how has that changed in your normal, and, and what are the benefits for you planning? Um, the more patient involvement completely and then being able to know what you're writing at that particular time and it not be um, a disjointed affair really you know um, you going off and writing about them in private yeah if that makes sense it's timely as well yeah it's you're doing that piece of you're writing those notes at that time aren't you yeah. rather than having a delay of you may have six visits that day and at the end of the day then you have to return to base to type all those notes up mm -hmm. so it's more accurate information isn't it because you're yeah. doing it there and then with that person so we're sort of improving quality, quality along the way in terms of the records are very timely yeah so you're not waiting for that note to be put on it's yeah. put on at that instance so if anybody's going into the electronic patient record you can see at a glance what's happened yeah and i think pre the app that was a massive problem for our team wasn't it yeah having yeah. notes put on in a timely way in an accurate way so it it, it would be that you know, you get busier, busier throughout the week and the notes would be the last thing that they would be thinking, I've got to catch up on. Yeah. Where now, that's the feedback has been that that's very beneficial, isn't yeah. it? Well, prior to this, I was always behind with my notes. A bit of a, a ball ache, like, to be perfectly honest, to have to do it at the end of the week. Yeah, we all, we all, we all hate the admin yeah. at the end of the week, <laughs> don't we? We all hate the admin. I'm not an admin person, I'm yeah. a hands-on person, yeah. you know, I, that, that's what my job is. Can, 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 can I just care. ask? Can I just ask a very quick question? So, um, I, so I understand the benefit of we've got an app that, that that can work offline and and we can type it up and then it uploads and everything to the electronic patient record. Completely stupid question, but but um, but uh, bear with me here. Um, how long uh, has the actual electronic patient record been there? Because because it seems to me before we had electronic patient records would you be writing notes in real time just as you are now yeah. um and so how, how long ago was it we, we moved from written. paper records and written records to an electronic patient record oh, you're all looking at me now we how, how long sharing. sorry did you say for 10 years ago it's more than that we we did have chips yeah if you can remember mm. before we yeah, went yeah. to lorenzo lorenzo was 2000 and i'm going to say this now 17 i think it was wasn't it mm -hmm. yeah uh, it's all a bit of a blur. I lived yeah. it. It is a bit of a blur for me. Um, but yeah, so true electronic patient record was with Lorenzo. Uh, there was the ability to record information in chips, but chips was very much a uh, retrospective again, but mm. notes were very new on that, weren't they? Yeah. So truly, probably about seven years. So, so... But that being funny, I mean, I mean, if if you're you know an, an experienced uh, you know community clinician who's been used to going out there and making all that, it's almost like we we it, it's taken us almost seven to ten years to get there, but we appear to have got to a situation where we've got the best of both worlds, whereas so everybody understands why creating something electronically and storing it electronically and being able to access it electronically and all of that is a benefit, yeah, but with a situation where you had to travel back to base mm. and you had to be connected to the Wi-Fi and then you had to type it up, that almost was taking away from a benefit that you had in the old days of, of, of you know, paper and notes and everything, where you were able to, to make those notes and have, have, have that timeliness and all of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. But what, we've, what we wanted to create with the electronic, and the whole ethos of an electronic record is that anybody can access it at any, any time. Mm. And... If you're, if we go back eons, years and years, 
that note you would have walked around with patients notes in left in your cars yeah, yeah. and you know there are multiple risks to that mm-hmm. but yeah. other staff aren't seeing those mm. um you know records and sometimes it's very lonely as a clinician because <coughs> nobody knows exactly where you are so there's safety concerns as well for you pre-planning that activity is both better for services better for the staff because your colleagues know where you are yeah and also better for the patient Mm -hmm. because if that information is correct and up to date on that record Mm -hmm. you go away from that visit and you've uploaded that information and that patient goes into crisis at midnight that information's there Mm -hmm. so Rich tell us about that patient that you went out to see when community aid had been down a couple of days yeah I didn't have my laptop with me Um, there was an issue I can't remember what the issue was now Um, and uh, she invited me into her house and she says, um, are you missing something today? I said, um, yeah, my laptop. She says, uh, oh, I was hoping that you'd bring it today. I quite miss the fact that you haven't brought your laptop out. I've got used to it um, and uh, doing the notes with you on a general basis. Mm-hmm. So, so sometimes when again when you are capturing those notes with with the patient, yeah. in, you know, in their own living room or, or wherever you are, d- d- does that provide a, a degree of comfort, if you like, to the actual patient that they've been captured properly? Well, at or? first, she said uh, there could be a potential barrier uh, whilst I'm writing the notes, but I'd already spent time with her prior to that anyway, talking, and uh, and then I'd the, write the notes afterwards. But she said, yeah, it could uh, potentially cause a little bit of a barrier had I not had that con- conversation with her first and foremost. So, so this patient, have you been in there now and, and, and taken out an iPhone or something or a, or your, or your, what, what, is your app on your, your laptop or is it? Or it's is on it, the laptop. Oh, it's still on the yeah, laptop. I thought yeah. for a minute you were going to say, now I've whacked out the iPad and she think, <laughs> yeah. she thinks I'm Steve Jobs. There was potential of doing that, wasn't there, on an iPad, but you said that the programme was too big. At, at the moment it's only supported on a laptop. Right, okay, that's cool. Uh, that's, that's worth knowing. Right. Um, can I just ask a question? Obviously, the um, one of the nice things that we're hearing is is that is that one of the reasons it's been so successful early on, and we are in early days, is is because you know it it delivers what frontline clinicians want, frontline our frontline community staff want. Okay. Did the idea for this, the the, the driver for this, originally come from the frontline, or was it something that the digital team knew? I tell you what, I know this will really work, and then it and then it was um, it was. Uh, offered to them a bit of both really as long as I've worked in combined 20 odd years um, there's always been that we want handheld solutions we want mobile working from from the front line from, from, from the front line yeah and it made absolute sense but we couldn't deliver it you know there wasn't the technology or there was the technology there but it wasn't supported by the clinical systems and there was all that concern and quite rightly so about how do we make it safe secure so there was lots of barriers that we needed to get through but I think that's again over the last 10 years things have changed and specifically more particularly sorry more in the last five years or three years it's been about how can we make this happen digital has no longer been the you know secure information of course it has to be secure but then we have to make the information available to the people at the right time and it's at the end of the day it's the patient record and I think that started to flip it's not our information it's theirs so they've got a right to be involved in in creating it so the technology has grown to support that um, and it's been really exciting to to get it out there finally after all these years it's been one thing that I've really wanted to do I, I think another massive impact i think has been able to have the clinical leads like lisa on board with each not just community aid but all of digital aspirants because mm. without these guys and the two rachies sat side here we wouldn't be where we are now so no. big thank you from me because it's been it hasn't been a chore at all it's been really exciting challenging at times ladies hasn't it yeah but, yeah you know you know it's been the benefits now just outweigh all the stress we had <laughs> but without lisa um, yeah. We wouldn't be where we are now. So massive impact they've had clinical. So, so let's let's flip this the other the other <laughs> way around, Lisa. 
how did you come to the table here? How did you hear about not just PDA but digital? And did, did, was it yourself volunteered, wanted to get involved, or was you approached? Or um, I've been working with digital projects, particularly tech, uh, technology, handheld technology, in the past with older adults, and I've been involved in a number of projects. And then there was an expression of interest that came out. And I'd have broke my foot at the time, and I was off sick. So I, I was under the influence of uh, codeine at the time to keep <laughs> the pain under control. And, and I was like, hmm, no, I, I, because it because it's a, um, quite a few grades above my my substantive post. And I thought, no, I can't possibly do that. And then um, a friend of mine sort of um, rang and said, "This is ideal for you. You need to apply." So I applied and got the post. Um, and it's been absolutely fantastic. Really, really enjoyed it. But it hasn't come without challenge. I mean, the team are absolutely phenomenal. Be- one of the best teams I've ever worked with. And I've worked here for 30 odd years. <laughs> we'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> but besides that, um, it's also about going and um, working with the teams and looking at their current processes. So we've talked about um, the old electronic patient record. And then the new one coming in, which is Lorenzo, which has been around since 2017. But staff are still using paper diaries. They're using notepads to write information. And we need to get rid of that. <laughs> you know, we've got, and we've got the opportunity to do that. Um, and it's looking at current processes and trying to match what staff are actually doing, but, but giving a different solution and seeing if we can perhaps meet halfway in terms of that so one of the one of the asks um because i put this on as a quality improvement piece of, of work as well was let's try and go paper free and that was one of one of my drivers and we met that to some degree not all because staff are a bit reluctant to get rid of their comfort of the paper diary but it, it's getting there but um and there, there was I, I won't lie there was quite a bit of resistance weren't there Rachel yes, there at the time um and staff looked at me as if what are you talking about <laughs> you know but but over time and and what's been really good is the support that Lou has been able to provide in terms of setting up a team's channel so the staff can go if there was any issues or um, problems that they come across that they were really struggling with, they could put it on the team's channel. Listening to your role, Lisa, um, you, you're almost like sort of um, like a sort of translation mechanism, aren't you? Between you, you understand frontline work, you understand people like Rachel here and and and, and Rachel and Rachel and and the pressures <laughs> there on there. The two... <laughs> <laughs> but but you're also but you're also. Uh, able to translate that into the digital space with a digital team and then backwards from the digital team across to the front line, yeah? And I think um, the benefit of that is that up until I started this role, I was out there, I was seeing patients in the community, I was running clinics, so I know what what, uh, the pressures are like and how how difficult it is and how the processes sometimes don't marry up together. So, yeah, I think that's been quite helpful. If Lisa doesn't know, nobody knows. Yeah. (laughs) I think, though, you gained a lot of respect by that Mm -hmm. really so when people were saying well we can't do this on this system we can't do that you were able to say well uh, you understood it didn't you from that perspective that has been one of the biggest barriers we've had in the past between I don't want to say them and us but uh, clinical you know Lisa's had a very tough job let's not underestimate this because she's challenged you yeah if I challenged you, within, you would listen to me because we, we work yeah. with colleagues and yeah. we're very you know, polite and, and, and we work together well. But I haven't got that reputation with you. Yes. You could quite happily say to me, what do you know? You've never been a clinician. Yeah. You know? And there's that kind of, like you say, translation. <laughs> Lisa yeah. can go, no, I know what you're saying here, but have you thought about it in a different way? Because yeah. she's a clinician. Yeah. And she's got that respect that, yeah. you know... And that... I think made a bit massive difference in your did. understanding the Lorenzo and and the input it all those kind of and having that um the team's group was yeah. massive wasn't it? Well, we yeah. were constantly um inputting onto yeah. that so we were able to if we were having difficulties with anything we'd put into that team's group wouldn't we yeah. straight yeah. away and then Lou or Lisa or yourself would yeah. come back to us wouldn't you? We have to mention we, we, we do have to mention our James as well. I was going to mention course. our James. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. James. Our James. Our James. James. Who's yeah. James? Then? I won't let him go. He's our deadline, uh, Dedalus, Dedalus. Dedalus, uh contact. So, what was formerly DXE 
who own Lorenzo, who okay. provide the system to us. Um, we've uh, James is an implementation specialist, but he is a Lorenzo guru. He works yeah. for the company Dedalus, and he's been part of yeah. this team. He's been amazing, you know. And I'm quite proud to say it feels like it's a team. Yeah, yeah. it does. You know? It does. Um, it's very it's inclusive. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And I think from my perspective, with James, a little bit like I am trying to translate community aid to the teams. He helps translate what the developers are doing over there yeah. into what what can be implemented, which is fantastic. Yeah. And he's been a real source of help because. As part of the project, I wanted to get out some in-app analytics to see who put a note on and when. You didn't know I was doing this, did you? <laughs> <laughs> As part of the, of, of the report, you know, that I'm going to submit. Um, so, yeah, he's been able to do that pre and, and post um, to see how people have been getting on with it. We've been able to produce those lessons learned, haven't we? We've been able to go through issues and resolve some things, not everything. Lisa's done a lot of reporting based on, um, well, you've changed SOPs and things, haven't you? We've done a lot of reporting, we've done... SOPs? SOPs, Standard Operating Procedures. For the uninitiated Sorry. listening to this podcast. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, so there's, there's been a lot of mm. stuff that we've done. We've done QRGs, haven't we? Quick reference, reference guides. <laughs> Very good. Um, we've done process maps. We've done a lot of things, haven't we, to support the rollout going forward yeah. and future releases. So, yeah, we've, we've done quite a bit in the background as well. So, oh, so I, I, too many acronyms. In there the is, there no, is. there always there are. Is. We love an acronym in the NHS. Don't we? Yeah. That's National yeah. Health Service, by the way, everybody. <laughs> okay, so I guess what we're hearing here is there's um, there's lots that we can learn. Lots that we yeah. can learn in terms of uh, the right way of doing things. So basically, you know, not being uh, being a bit humble about about what we're trying to develop. Not being not being scared of change. Yeah. Not being not being critical of people who who, who might have, um, uh, you know, understandable concerns. Also taking on board any questions we've got as part of that journey, working with them and 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 doing that in an iterative process, process if you like. Okay, and and it appears to work. It so, um, if if you know, here we are, um, you know, start of November twenty twenty one. I don't know how I don't know how long people will be listening to this. So say say let's 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 go forward. Let's go forward to the sunny uplands of I don't know, maybe two years hence or something like that, or or given the speed you're doing something next Thursday or next something. Next Thursday. <laughs> so, so, um, no pressure. If, if if somebody if if you wanted to look back on this, you know in a you know, you know, considerable time and let's say um, how would you measure success? How would you say, do you know what? That that has been an absolute brilliant success. What would you be looking for? Personally, for me, it would be multiple things. It would be no paper diaries. <gasps> that would be brilliant. But clinicians being able to work truly mobile and truly from base and truly go home, do you know what I mean, at the end of the day and, and have their time. We've not mentioned this, but the work-life balance impact mm, absolutely. As, as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think... That, that's that's been a gift in mm. itself with this app mm. it means you don't have to worry about the adding on at the end of the day in your mm. own time or you, doing you, the notes you pull up at five o'clock or whatever time you pull up and you know you've completed your day yeah. you're not then having to think when you walk through the door and everybody thinks you've finished with it actually leave me be i've got to put all my yeah. notes on now and that yeah. that was fed through wasn't it yeah, a lot yeah. i felt like that very much so yeah. that it, when you you come home, you were home, you'd finished. Yeah, so for, for me, it's that, really. Yeah. It's being able to, to have work, give, giving people the technology to be able to do their job to the best that they can. Mm. And the still time. have a life. And still <laughs> have a life, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. OK, well, listen, Well, is, is, is there anything else that, that you, you'd like to say or you think that people would find useful who, who, who want to know any, any more about this? I just think it's been a great success. And we should pat ourselves all on the back and um, take it to the to the next level now, Lisa, if you're up for it. <laughs> of course, I'm always up for it. Go, okay, Lisa. And, 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 and can I just check, um, anybody who's listening to this who might want to know more, uh, um, um, either outside of the Trust or inside the Trust, um, how, how can they, who do they get in contact with and how do they contact you? Well, we've got, um, we've actually got a Twitter account you now. Um, I can't remember that off the top of my Combined head. Combined Digi app? Yes. Is it not? Yeah. <laughs> 
but um, yeah, you can you can contact. We've we've also got a email address. Yeah. Um, can Digi- you remember that, Lou? I, I'm sure it's digi- did. It might be digital dash aspirants at combined. NHS. Okay. Alternatively, yeah. everybody listening, you can contact the comms team and we can yeah. pass it on. That's yeah. communications at combined.nhs or on Twitter, yeah. combined or, or NHS. You can, you can speak to any of us, to be, yeah. to be fair, by contact. email or teams. We're, we're always... Yeah. We're always here. We are, we are. We're always available. <laughs> but in, in the meantime, if I could just bring this conversation to a close. Thank you ever so much. Thanks ever so much for taking part okay. in this. It, it, it sounds really exciting and it sounds really, really, really encouraging. And most importantly, the, the the best thing from you know from anybody sitting in a, a corporate level or three levels removed from the front line is just hearing from the people who actually deliver care for you know our communities and our people. Just it's making it better for the patients and it's making things better for the staff yeah, as well. I what more could we want? The process, uh, exciting to continue going forward with it. Really, wow. Brilliant. Well, thanks ever so much. And um, and, Thank you, Joe. and yeah. we Thank you, look Joe. forward to Thank lots you. more podcasts about Thank all you. things wonderful digital, okay? Yes. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.